Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. This is part 2 of the Fujifilm PCR11 X-ray image scanner teardown. And today we are taking a look at the laser scanning module. And because this is uh, in uh, a rather simple turns, uh, simple unit, we will of course try to do some reverse engineering, get the laser scanner motor to run and turn on the laser diode. So let's take a closer look to the unit and what's inside. The case only has two connections. We have one for the laser module, the LDD23A, and we have the scanner motor module, which is called SYN23A. Place the optics unit in good case. This is the good case. Luckily, we have the good case. Do not hold here, so let's not do that once again. Let's take a closer look of each of the PCBs. The laser module has a 16-pin input header. It also seems to have all its own power supply, which is this one over here, which is a constant current power supply. Then it also have yeah, some uh, feedback sensors, and it seems to be taking plus 5 and plus 15 volt DC. And as we can see on some of the um, markers here, all the white PCB print, silk screen, that it actually has a lot of diagnostics. Because, uh, of, again, this is uh, X-ray image scanning, so we have to be quite sure that the laser is operating just as expected. I have a level, very little hope to uh, reverse engineer this very complex board and make that run, so I think I will just drive the laser diode by itself. The connector for the scanner motor is actually in two parts. The part on the right is actually a light uh, feedback, which measures the reflected light inside the case, whereas this only has to do with the scanning motor itself. Now, I did find some uh, service manuals with some schematics about this, but of course all the naming conventions of the different pins. The unit actually comes with a click-on lid, so it's actually quite uh, easy to get into the whole unit. Um, it just sits with a small gasket all around it, but uh, seems to be uh, good enough to uh, avoid getting any dust inside of it. And I guess this was of course uh, assembled in a clean room, which we are going to ruin now. Oh wow, look at that nice optics there. So what is going on down here? We have our laser diode sitting over here. We have some kind of measurement device to the uh, laser diode driver, so that's a feedback goes up through this glass, mirrors in through these two lenses, onto the scanner motor, which then reflects it out all along these lines. And by all the mirrors and lenses, then that's what we see through the output. Now over here there is some other lens, and this is the reflection measurement that I talked about on the right PCB on the scanner motor board, sits over here. The Sanyo laser scanner motor assembly here uses a LB181872 driver IC, but it does not use the um, clock impulse pin. If we check out the datasheet, we only have these six wires here. It uses a 74HC4020, which is a 14 step sequential um, IC. So it seems that actually it is generating the pattern for driving a three phased brushless motor with the uh, 74HC4020 and use that to drive the IN1 and IN2 inputs of the driver chip itself. Now the wires here says from the manual that we have plus 24 volt DC. Then we have some um, saturation um, detection. Then we have a start stop of the motor. Then we have another ground. And then last we have what is called PIDXL. That's the starting point of trying to get this to run. The laser diode assembly is quite simple. It is just three wires and going through what seems to be maybe two small inductors for noise suppression. But there we have it, the three legs of the laser diode itself. And it sits in this nice fixture here. So if we turn that around, we can actually see the diode in there. Now, I don't um, fear that I can't mount this correctly again, because it sits with these nicely polished surfaces up against some uh, 
yeah, supports. So it's really just being held very lightly in place by the two screws. So it's all aligned with these uh, set screws that we have here at the top. All right, so I have my signal generator set for a, yeah, what's that? Some 200 uh, hertz signal right now. Uh, the manual for the um, drive IC here says it takes a pulse input from 400 hertz to 10,000 hertz. So uh, we'll just start with a low speed input. I have supplied the uh, board out here with 24 volt DC. And we have a 3 volt DC um, high input to the start stop of the motor. And then we have our clock pulse input here. So uh, let's just try to turn on the power supply. And uh, yeah, nothing really happens. Try to change the drive frequency. No, not really doing it, doing anything. It is uh, supposed to be um, driven with a falling um, trigger. So it is uh, correct pulsing, but we can also try the uh, opposite one. Yeah, that doesn't really change a thing. Okay, so kind of weird. I was just poking around with the, this is the three volt drive start stop signal. I have my uh, clock pulse here. So uh, I connected that to the start stop and it starts driving. Let's just try to change it. But what I noticed is that it doesn't really matter. I can actually turn off my, uh, my signal generator and the motor keeps running. But if I disconnect this wire, then it stops running. So clearly I'm uh, making the uh, scanner motor run from uh, pure interference of, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe 50 hertz. Because if I try to stop it, I can actually hear it starts uh, regulating and uh, tries to, uh, to pick up speed again. So it is driving as it should. And it's probably for a set speed in a laser scanner like this that it cannot have a varying speed. With the state of the driver we have here right now, this is how it's going to run. I made a small, simple, constant current driver with a LM317. It's played really safe with a uh, 1K potentiometer and 80 ohms uh, here, so I can maximum supply up to 15 milliamps. I'm going to use another power supply for the uh, DC supply to the diode over here and measure the voltage on a multimeter up here. I'm just going to play it real safe, uh, really low power, just enough so we can actually see the laser beam being reflected on the motor, hopefully. Laser safety, that of course you need to wear the correct goggles that has the correct uh, nanometer ratings for the type of laser you're working with. And mentioning that, do check out my merchandise shop where I actually do have a mark that says, do not look into laser beam with remaining eye. So over here we have the milliamp measurement of the laser diode. So let's try to turn it on. So I'm getting up at around uh, three volt. So it's one and a half volt on the laser diode now. It's pulling 0.6 milliamps. So very little of course, just slowly ramping up the current. Raise the voltage a bit up to around Oh, yeah, that about. Unfortunately, I'm not driving the laser beam uh, hard enough, but uh, as we can see here on a white piece of paper, that we do have a laser output. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to uh, push this any further. Uh, I think instead I will try to use a green uh, laser pen and then point it in through where the laser diode here is mounted. Okay, so trying to hand align a laser into uh, this is, uh, yeah, not that easy, but I got a feeling where it was mounted. Just have to watch that beam going somewhere. Okay, so here we have it. The line we see up here on the paper is the actual output to the image scanning plate. And if I can just get my very simple smoke machine to work here.
like that we are able to see the beam. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed a bit of reverse engineering on the Sanyo Scala motor. And then of course just watching a simple constant current driver can be used to light up a laser diode. Now lasers are not my main field. So I actually do not really like to work with them as I do like all the proper uh, protection equipment. That is also why we only did a very low power test to stay safe in this one and used a commercial laser pointer to demonstrate how the optics and pathways worked. So uh, yeah, this is actually still uh, spinning here. So um, yeah, maybe I should put this down again. So until next time, see ya.